Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be touching on a topic that is really, really relevant to us as a family at the moment. I wasn't sure whether I should make this video because, um, well, I thought it was quite a personal video, but then at the same time, I actually think it's not personal because I think every single human being goes through this stage in their life. Today, I am going to be talking about the hormonal surges in younger kids particularly sort of like 10 year olds. And I'm going to give you five ways and tips and methods, is that the right word to use, um, that we sort of use in our household to manage those kind of stressful hormonal surges that our kids go through. If you are watching this and you are going through something similar or have been through this in the past and you have more tips, please comment down below in the comments section because I know this video will be quite helpful for some people, but I also know that the sort of coping mechanisms with um, hormonal surges can vary hugely from child to child. So these are what works for our children, but other methods might work for yours. So our youngest child, Jamie, is 10 years old and he is currently going through a bit of a change internally and he can often kind of go from being the sweetest, loveliest child to then suddenly getting quite upset and angry and having these kind of outbursts. When this first started, I would get quite cross with him and I would think he was being naughty and I would tell him off. And this leads on to my first tip where I am going to say that definitely didn't work for us. What does work for us is to understand that this sort of surge or emotion is going to start coming out soon. So what I like to do is I like to then try and calm the situation down by by just speaking to him in a normal tone and by letting him know that I am there for him if he wants to talk to me. Your child also doesn't really understand what's going on with them. Suddenly they're okay one moment and then they might just have a kind of wave of upset or a wave of sort of anger go through them, but they don't understand that this is just a normal sort of growing process and they haven't learned how to recognize or deal with these emotions. We like to respond to Jamie's outbursts in a calm way and by us not shouting, it honestly brings his outbursts down by a good few notches. The second coping method that I feel really helps Jamie is to give him some space. Jamie is quite affected by tiredness, so by the time the evening comes around, I know I need to watch out for the little signs that he might be getting emotional. So I like to let him know that I am there for him, but that he also has his own space to be alone too. We have been listening to Bibi and Tina's radio plays recently, which I think has been so beneficial. Bibi and Tina is a story about two best friends and the adventures they have together with their horses, Sabrina and Amadeus. You may be thinking that these radio plays might not be for your child because they are about two girls and their horses, but it's actually the meaning behind each chapter that really resonates with the children. During the radio plays, Bibi and Tina talk through child issues, but in a fun yet discreet way. So children are subconsciously soaking in that the situation they may be experiencing are totally normal at their age. So it looks like Zigord von Strau will be the new Forester's trainee. But hold on, wasn't he the one who wanted to sell the beavers for their fur? Let's see what Bibi, Tina, and Alex are up to. Someone's got to be behind this. Do you think it was done on purpose? Tina also has a boyfriend called Alexander in the story. So there are references to first love stories like holding hands, which is perfect for Jamie's age because little romances are popping up everywhere in class. But sometimes I think that kids feel if they talk about their feelings, then they might just get laughed at. So Tina and Alexander just normalize childhood feelings. Bibi and Tina's radio plays have a range of actors and narrator that provides enough acoustic support for both children and grown-ups to imagine the visuals, whereas a typical audio book has only about one or two narrators and almost no music or sound effects, meaning the children can get quite bored and distracted quickly. Bibi and Tina's radio plays, however, result in children being entertained for longer, further supporting creative thinking. I'll pop a link to Bibi and Tina's radio plays down below in my description box so you can give it a listen. You can play it for your child and see if it does help as a coping method for them. Like I said, it really, really helps with Jamie. Often we'll listen to it together, but like I said, he also loves to go and just lay in his bedroom or do some drawing and listen by himself. The next coping mechanism that I wanted to share, which honestly is a big one for both of our kids, is making sure I have some healthy snacks ready for them to dive into the fridge and get whenever they're hungry. 
I don't know about your kids, but mine come home from school really quite hangry. And I know when they are hungry, it really affects their moods as well. So what I like to do, instead of them coming home and having something that might be quite sugary and unhealthy, I like to make sure I just batch prep a massive pot of peppers, cucumbers, carrots, and I keep them in the fridge. So when the kids come home from school, they know they're allowed to just go into the fridge get the healthy snack pot out and eat as much as they like. I feel like having healthy snacks opposed to sugary snacks is a really good habit to get the kids into as food really does play such a big part in how your children's moods are affected. And if your kids are anything like mine, then once they have a snack and their hunger has been fed, they are completely different children again and back to normal. <laughs> My fourth coping mechanism definitely goes hand in hand next to the healthy eating and that is to make sure the kids get plenty of exercise. As you know, we live in the UK and the weather can be quite temperamental and it can rain a lot. What I try to do with the kids, even though they complain so much, is I want to take them out for a dog walk. Not only does it give our dog Lulu her exercise for the day, but however much the kids might complain as we're getting ourselves ready, they always really enjoy the walk and the fresh air while we're out. I try to make a walk as fun as it can be for the kids. So we'll play like I spy while we're out and about. We'll just do some talking, we'll do running races. So I try to make them get some sprints in, anything to make the experience for them more enjoyable. And Honestly, I would say 95% of the time when we get home, they are so pleased that they have been out and their moods have been completely transformed. Once the kids have had their exercise, then I don't mind if they want to then play on their devices for a little bit. So they almost get a reward for doing something beneficial to their health. The last coping mechanism, which I want to share that has really helped for Jamie, and it has taken a bit of time to get to this point, if I'm honest, because he would always forget like what to do at the beginning, is that I have told him once he starts to feel a kind of surge of emotions, that he needs to take a deep breath and count to five. So Jay, when you do your deep breathing and then count to five, what does it make you feel? Calm. Yeah? Does it make you forget about why you were maybe upset in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, is it a good tactic that we use? Yeah. Good tactic? Yeah. We talk quite openly about the hormonal changes that are going on like in the boys because I feel like it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It happens to all of us. So it's just a natural process in life. So that's why he was quite happy to come on here and tell you guys about that and how he feels after he has done his deep breathing and counting. So at the beginning, I used to have to always remind him to do this. Sometimes it would have gone a little bit too far for him to bring himself back to that point. But now he really has embraced this coping mechanism and he often can feel the surge coming before we can even see it. And then he takes his breath, he counts to five. And I would probably say about six times out of 10, this really works for him and he's able to control the emotional surge. For him, that has taken a little bit of time to learn and to introduce it into his kind of everyday life. But it's something that has helped him so much. I really don't know how long these surges typically last for, but Jamie's has been going on for probably about a year now. So I'm hoping as his hormones start to sort of balance off, they might be coming fewer and farther between, but I just don't know. So if you have any advice for me, I honestly would love for you to pop it down in the comment section. No one tells you and teaches you about this stage in their life when you become a parent. So you just have to kind of find the techniques and the mechanisms that work for you and your children. I really hope my tips have been useful for you and you can try them out and see if they work for your child too. I do feel though it is important for your kids to be able to express themselves and almost get the anger or the frustration or the emotions out of them. And often you do need to let them have that little outburst or have a little cry because it just releases so much from them. So even though we use these coping mechanisms at home, we do also let Jamie just sort of have a big blowout because I feel like it does really help for him to just sometimes go rah and he does feel so much better. That's also a coping mechanism in itself. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do feel like we are slowly getting there with Jamie, but it's still quite a big thing in our household at the moment. So I hope that, like I said, some of these will have helped you guys. And let me know if you want to see another video like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.